The challenge I'm setting myself is that I've got to find the best Galbi gym in LA and then go there, eat it, and recreate it for you guys back at home. I can do it. When have I ever let you guys down? Oh, it's frigging freezing. Oh, I want to go back to LA. I can't wait to share this dish with you. Like, I just love Galbi Gym. This has taken me a seriously long time to master. I have had so many different attempts at this. I've tried so many different ingredients and now this guy is like locked down solid. Coming back here and trying lots of different Korean ingredients and getting a few moves from my Korean mates here in the UK. I'm, I reckon I'm ready to, you know, get into a fight about Galbi Gym. I know all you Korean guys and girls are gonna be like, no. So, let me come clean right off the bat. This is not going to be 100% authentic. This is me taking those pillars of flavor from the dish and taking my experience as a chef and then changing a few things up to get even more flavor in those areas. Up until the 1980s, what was interesting was is that you see on balconies of all the apartments in Korea, these big clay pots, and you go, well, what's in there? Oh, that's my own soy sauce. Wow, that is so cool. And it makes me want to do it here. Authentic Korean flavors come from authentic Korean ingredients. You need a particular cook. Are these rice cakes? They are... Oh, yeah, they're compressed rice. And, and those, are those um, traditional in the Galbi Gym? Yeah. Gochugaru, the chili flakes, are actually not at all very spicy. It's quite a coarse chili powder that we use. Korean sesame oil, I don't know what they do to it, because this particular brand, Odugi, they have just got this formula. These are the golden pears, it's a type of nashi pear. The first area to start with is the preparation of the beef short ribs. There's essentially two techniques that you can use to prepare the beef ribs. But basically what needs to happen is before you can cook them, we need to pull out the impurities, the excess blood that's within it that can be pulled out. And so there are two techniques. There's the first technique, which is that you can drop them into hot water, bring that up to the boil. It brings out all the impurities that sit out on the top. And that technique is very similar to how you make a tonkatsu ramen. If you haven't seen my tonkatsu video, you should go and check that out. It's absolute stonker. Now I've opted for option two, which is that you pour cold water over them the day before and you let them sit in the fridge and that draws out all the impurities. And so they end up looking like this. The reason that I've gone for this technique is because the first thing that I'm gonna do, which is not traditional and I haven't really seen in any other recipes, is that I'm gonna seal my meat. It's an extra step, but for me, one of the pillars of flavor in this dish is the sweetness. And the second one is the depth. And what I'm gonna do is by caramelizing the meat, I'm gonna bring both of those flavors to the fore in a really natural way. So I'm gonna drain the water off and then I'm gonna caramelize the outside of the meat. Okay, let's get that on. Crank up the heat. No ventilation, is there? So now we come to the ingredients that are gonna flavor this dish. They are absolutely integral for another pillar of the flavor of this dish. So it starts with Korean soy sauce. So you want about 150 mils of the soy sauce. Then you want about 700 mils of water. You want a good 150 to 200 mils of soju, which is Korean liquor. We want some black pepper in there. We want a shed load of garlic and ginger in there. This stew is in serious need of garlic. So you're talking about 18, 19 cloves of garlic grated, yeah? I know it's a pain in the ass. Ginger wise, you want, you know, you want about a tablespoon and a half, two tablespoons. Okay, so we're going to put one of these large Korean pears in. The juice that's coming out of it is ridiculous, and then. Oh wow, oh wow. 
not awfully sweet at all, but you can totally see how that's going to help that dish. Oh, wow. So don't lose all that moisture from the pear. Get that in. Next up comes kuchutaro. I think that's right in terms of the pronunciation. Korean chili flakes. Now, I wouldn't use any other chili flakes. I did try some regular chili flakes. It just didn't work. The flavor was completely different. Uh, I've seen some recipes that are suggested like Thai chili flakes, but like seriously, just go and get Korean ingredients for this recipe is my advice. Now you do not want to scrimp on this. You want to go large. You want about four or five huge heat tablespoons. Now we come to the final ingredient and this dish is really, really sweet. It's really sweet and sour. I'm pretty sure Sun Nong Dang uses fructose corn syrup. I've got a massive problem with using it. It is the key component in obesity in America and it's not good. Give it the finger. I had a go at Korean rice syrup, didn't work. It made it cloudy and it didn't have the right sweetness. So there's two things that I'm gonna do. I'm going to help the Asian pear with a little bit of apple juice. And then the second thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use plain old runny honey. Let's get it in, eh? I also put a good glug of Korean sesame oil and this stuff, mega. Right, so this is ready to rock. Now, what you normally do is whack this on a stove and let it bubble away for about at least two hours. And you'd start it off aggressively and then you turn it down and you just let it tickle away. Because I am going for absolute obsession of Galbi Gym and hitting all those amazing pillars of taste, I'm gonna use a pressure cooker. Now, I worship at the feet of the pressure cooker. Why? Because when you're cooking meat on the bone, the pressure pulls out the bone marrow and the fat that's in those bones and it pushes it into the stew. And what that does is it adds depth of flavor and it also thickens it and it makes it flipping delicious. My mates at Sage gave me this three or four months ago. This is not an ad for them or anything like that. I'm just a massive fan of their pressure cooker. Um, I'll put a link in uh, down below in the description box, but this is just absolutely brilliant. So I'm gonna get this guy in, I'm gonna cook him for at least an hour, an hour and a half to really get that beef falling off the bone. Right, time to get on with the rest of the ingredients. Let's peel carrot and potato. For me, the onion in this is just so key to the dish because the way I'm gonna do it, I think is similar to the way they've done it, which is that it's slightly charred, it's got some caramelization coming out there, but the cubes that they're cut into, that's really, really important because that volume of onion within the dish gives relief to the moorishness of the beef. Just put it into these nice cubey pieces. And then same with the mouli. Take the skin off and then cut it into chunks similar to the carrot. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do, which is not authentic, I can't find it in any other recipes. I'm going to get these gently, just slightly caramelized on the pan. And what's great about that is, because then you've got this gnarliness on the beef and on the onions, on the carrots. And then when it goes into the stock, the moisture's gonna hit that and it's gonna bleed all in. And all that beautiful caramelization is gonna become one within the pot. Let's do it! Oh, <laughs> I love Gabby Jim, man. Okay, so these guys are nicely coloured. It's been about an hour. Let's get the vegetables in with the meat. Oh, mate, like it's just the most vibrant red colour. Just look at this beef. It's already beginning to come off the bone. Oh, mate, that is going to be amazing. Woohoo! So now it's time to get the root vegetables in there. And we're just going to cook it for another 10 minutes in the pressure cooker. If you're cooking it just on the pan, then uh, you're gonna do that for about 20 minutes until it's tender. And then it's time to just finish off with the last ingredients. Let's get it in. And then the final thing to finish with, Korean rice cakes. When I first encountered them, I was like, what the hell are these? They're amazing cylinders of pressed rice. Like they're just such a wicked ingredient. Go so well in this stew. Okay, that's finished. Let's get it plated up and see how we've got on. Oh, mate, look at that. Like, it looks like the Galbi Gym from Son Nong Dang. Yeah. 
Okay, I'm going in. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. The stock is just so delicious. It's got all that beefy flavor in there, but it's spicy and sweet as hell. The tenderness of the beef is flipping amazing. And both the rice cakes and the potatoes are just working as these like food floats that are just sucking in all the stew. Ah! The thing that just takes it to like carnival day at Flavortown is the cheese. If there's one recipe that you're gonna try from mine, please try this because it is incredible. I hope the judges think the same tomorrow. I love you. My judges are Ju Won, a chef who has worked at the highest Michelin starred level, and Dan Su, who runs the Korean food supplier in the UK. Dan just tied the knot with his wife, Jae Hee, so she came down as well. First you get the smell of chili, and then you have that traditional garbage gym smell comes a bit after. I think the texture of the beef is really good. The meat itself very nice. It's tender, very soft. Uh, potato, carrots. It's all cooked really nice. Some some people when they cook the garbage gym, they really focus on meat. They forget about uh, potato and carrots. Yes. It's really mushy sometimes. And how do you feel about the sweetness in the dish? Well, the sweetness for me is absolutely fine. I would never put that much sweetness in. No, it. Like, I can't think of one. <laughs> European dish that has that level of sweetness in it's any. Dish, I just yeah. can't think of one. Yeah, no. What is it? One. And there's like dumplings. A main, a main course European. And you have that the... level of sweetness. Mm. No. No. There isn't much. No. Um, sure and, and so for me, it was like it took me three attempts to build up the courage to put. <laughs> the, you know. The, yeah, yeah. Right, the ingredients. Yeah. Um, it nearly took me three attempts to be like. Oh no, you've got to put more in. <laughs> the actual balance of flavours in there is outstanding. So good. So your sixth attempt in ten days. That's off to you. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. Did you make this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's something. <laughs> that? Really? <laughs> Thank you so much for making the yeah, schlep right, down here. Yeah, Thanks John. so much for Thank you, John. Thank you very, very much. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to have you. Yeah.